Hello, this is Michelle Fashler. I'm a vocational services team leader and a certified benefit specialist at Places for People in St. Louis. Today, I'm going to be talking about Social Security and Wage Reporting. The objectives of this webinar are to talk about why is income reporting so important, how and when should income be reported, and what should be reported. In benefits planning, often we tell people you need to report your income to Social Security. We fail to tell people why it's so important and give more information about the rules. We also know that one of the main reasons that people don't want to explore work is because they have misinformation about Social Security, and often the root of that misinformation is someone has told them a story about how they lost their benefits when they work, or they themselves lost their benefits when they worked, and often that has to do uh, with a wage reporting error and a resulting overpayment. So if we can provide people with the correct information about reporting their income, and if we can provide our staff at our agencies with the correct information, we can make this a really seamless transition for people when they return to work. The primary reason for reporting wages to Social Security Administration in a timely manner is to prevent overpayment. So this minimizes, like I said, both our beneficiary and our staff time spent to correct issues. Many people have examples of times when someone received an overpayment four or five years later, and then many people had to run around to do things to correct those issues. Um, so if we can take care of this on the front end, then hopefully we're not doing that. Also, Social Security's accounting system needs the wages to plan ahead. I'll show you in a couple slides how that works. So they need the information now so they can plan ahead. Often, our, the people that we serve need their budget to plan ahead, and that's kind of how Social, Security, Social Security's information works as well. Social Security is using the information to determine if a beneficiary is eligible for benefits in that month. So Social Security you know, is based on wages, based on resources. So for SSI, they're determining eligibility every month. Um, SSDI is a little bit different and a little bit more complicated, but still they need that information to determine eligibility. And often sometimes think, people think, well, if I don't report my wages, then they're not going to know. Um, but if we can help people understand that Social Security obtains pay information from many sources, including the IRS, unemployment information, vocational rehabilitation reports, and third-party reports. And these are just a few examples, but eventually that information is going to get there, sometimes faster than others, that it is going to get there. And if we can do this on the front end, that everyone's life is going to be a little bit easier. So when does income need to be reported? For the most accurate accounting, report changes uh, report changes in wages by the sixth of the month. And representative payees are, should be reporting information on behalf of their beneficiary. Um, if you have done a uh, benefits calculator on DB101, you might have seen that when they do the reporting for people, it'll show people uh, a report for this month as opposed to two months ahead. And this retrospective monthly accounting is why if people have SSI. So Social Security uses RMA, where changes reported now, which is the computation month, will apply two months later for the budget month. So if Sam reports his income from April on May 4th, his income from April will be reflected on his July SSI check. And that's a timely way to do it. If Sam reports his income from April on May 10th, which is late, his income from April will be reflected on his August check. So it's a little bit later. Sam's July check is based on an estimate from his March earnings, and he might have an overpayment. So if Sam has a job where he earns the exact same amount every month, that could be okay. If Sam has a job where his earnings fluctuate, which is common for um, 
many people. Every month doesn't have the same amount of days if it's somebody who works um, different uh, hours. Some people work 15 hours a week or 17 hours a week. And it could be different, and it could result in one, an overpayment or an underpayment. And so usually if people wanted you know, more money, they want more money. So it's really important that people report their wages on time. Again, because of this way that Social Security does their counting. Now also, this is why sometimes people get a letter two years later, <laughs> um, and it will say, some two years is a bit of an exaggeration, but later that will say you were not eligible for Social Security in this month because they get pay stubs that indicate that a person was not actually eligible based on their earnings. This can happen to both SSI recipients and SSDI recipients based on substantial gainful activity. And if people aren't on, don't know about that, don't have someone helping them with that, then that can mean that they can have to pay back full amounts, which could be very difficult for people. There are work incentives to help people remedy that, but it can be pretty distressing for people to get that letter. So how do people report income? There are actually different ways for each Social Security program. So for SSI, there's actually several ways. There's by mail, by fax, in person. There is a telephone reporting system for some beneficiaries. Not everyone is eligible for that. I would say note that by the telephone, people need to have a nice quiet place to do that and be able to speak very clearly if they're going to use the telephone way. And there is a mobile app. For the mobile app, it needs to be one person doing that per phone. So an employment specialist or a case manager couldn't be reporting multiple people's income from their phone. It needs to be one person per phone number per app doing that. Regardless of the method that you use to report your income, everyone can sign up for a monthly email or a text reminder to report their income, which I think is a really handy tool and everyone should do that. So I think it's important to remember, too, that a lot of times I hear people telling people they should do it one way or the other, and I think we should let people choose which way they want to do it, because each of these methods has a benefit. So some people might like to go to the office and get the letter right back telling them what their next uh, SSI check is going to be, and we might not like the idea of sitting in the office for a long time, but some people might like getting that letter back. Um, so we shouldn't choose for people. Um, and if you do it by mail, you know, you don't always get something back letting you know that you did that. Always copy, uh, obviously send a copy in. Um, and so each way has its own benefits, and we should be okay with people doing that however they want to do that. By telephone, if you look on the, if you, if you just Google SS, SS, or Social Security, telephone reporting, it actually comes with a very long um, explanation and there are some wage reporting diaries on there which can be very good for people especially um, if, they, if they like all that detail and they want to keep track of that. That can be really helpful. So SSDI actually has less options because SSDI is not as, as important for people to report those wages every month because their amount is not changing. We're in SSDI they're getting the same check amount every month. That Their amount is not changing based on their wages. So it's not quite as important to have as many options for them. Again, people with SSDI can still sign up for the text reminder or the email reminder. They can do it by mail, by fax, or in person. Um, and often, sometimes a Claims rep might tell someone with SSDI they don't need to report as frequently um, if they're not earning as much. If they're closer to the amount known as substantial gainful activity, then they might want to report more often just to be safe. So things that need to be reported. All earnings from work and self-employment, um, and that'll be ours as well because in self-employment, it's Work earnings and hours are, co are 
included, the beginning and end of work. So you need to let Social Security know when you end work in writing is best. Um, if you have a final pay stub or something from your employer, the more documentation you can give them, the better, so that they're not estimating, again, so they're not estimating earnings from before uh, for your checks forward if, if you're an SSI recipient, or they're not counting a month of trial work if you're an SSDI recipient, so they're ending that as soon as possible. Change in your pay or work hours. So hopefully, if you're an SSI recipient, you're reporting that so they can see that. Um, you're not just letting them count those those other work hours. If you're SSDI and they've told you to only report three months, if you have a change, if you start working less or more, you're letting them know and you're not just waiting. Again, so they're not counting um, work months. Any items or services that you need to work due to disability and keep your receipts. So any items or services, these would be impairment related work expenses and this would help uh, in a substantial gainful activity determination. So this can really help people. And if you have any extra help that is received at work because of a disability, so if you have extra breaks or if your job is a little bit different than other people, if you do um, one part of the job you don't do because of your disability, this would be an employer subsidy. And this would also be a um, work incentive that would help with the SGA determination. And our, our people we serve can do this, case managers can help people do this, employment specialists can help people do this, but this is all stuff that we can do to help and then report because Social Security is going to make the final determination on this, but we can help people organize all of these things. So just to wrap up and review, reporting wages to Social Security in a timely manner is important to ensure that people are receiving their correct benefits each month because it's important, much easier if we do that in the beginning than having to follow up and do that later. Wages should be reported by the sixth of the month for proper accounting. It helps Social Security and it, it helps us. Representative payees should report on behalf of their beneficiary. Everyone can sign up for a text or email reminder to report regardless of how they report their wages and we talked about all the ways that people can report their wages. And wages, changes in earnings, hours and work incentives should be reported to Social Security. I hope that in this webinar, we have cleared up how we report wages to Social Security and that everyone will help their consumers do that in a timely manner. Thank you. <laughs>